Hi, if you're currently coding or ever have coded a C application, you might have heard of the C runtime library that gets statically or dynamically linked into your executable by default. Uh, this library contains all the necessary functions defined by the C standard, such as fopen, printf. Now this is actually the glue that makes your C program portable, because every platform that allows you to use the C programming language uh, will have its own implementation of the C runtime library. Which usually is a nice thing, right? I don't have to worry what kind of platform I'm running in. Except that's not quite true, because for example on Windows it doesn't even implement the whole C standard, so there might be some things missing. Now underneath the hood what actually happens if I call fopen for example, the C code will just you know provide me with the file structure that I can use throughout the program, but then actually at some point it will call out into the kernel APIs specifically for that platform that will then be open the actual file handle and return it to the C runtime library. Now if I don't really care about you know portability and don't really want to port my program over to different platforms such as Linux or Mac, why not just use the kernel APIs directly? and not rely on the C runtime at all. It would make my executable much smaller and I'm in direct control of the code that I'm writing and I can fix things easily and I can reason about what I ship. Of course to make the executable smaller I could also just dynamically link the C runtime library but then I still need to ship it potentially to the user because there's no guarantee that they might actually have the exact version that I need uh, installed. And in fact if you've ever installed a video game on Steam or something like that you might see a setup uh, pop up that uh, tries to install the VC runtime, which is exactly that. It is the C runtime that's being installed on your system, that particular version that this game requires. So obviously your mileage may vary whether you find that useful or actually is something you might want to consider for your own project, but I got really interested in that and wanted to figure out if I can actually just compile a Windows application without the C runtime included. And I found a bunch of online resources which I will link down in the description as well and yeah, I got it working, so let me show you. So I created this example application here right here. All that it's doing is it's opening a file, reading the contents of that file out into an array, closing the file, and then printing all the contents of the array out onto the screen. And as you can see, it's importing stdio and stdlib, and I'm using very common C library functions such as fopen, fread, fclose, and puts. And I'm just gonna go ahead and build this program, and then run it. just so you can see that it works. Here are all the contents of the file, and I'm printing all done at the end here. And if we look at the executable, we can see it's roughly 126 kilobytes big. Um, that is because the whole C runtime library is statically linked into the executable. So the first step to remove the dependency to the C library is of course, remove the include files. But now I'm not going to be able to use fopen and fread and puts, of course. Um, I have to provide my own implementations of these things, or at least find a Windows equivalent I can use. So I'm going to start by including the Windows header file. Now fopen can be replaced with create file, um, which basically means create me a file handle uh, for this file name and I want to be able to read from it and uh, fail if the file does not exist. And instead of checking the file handle for null, I'm going to check for invalid handle value, which is what create file will return if it fails. Similar, fread can be replaced with read file, which needs the file handle the destination array of where we want to read the data into, the amount of bytes we want to read, and then it wants a pointer to a D word, which will be the amount of data that actually has been read from the file, similar to what I have done down here. So the new if would look something like this, if not read file, or read it doesn't equal data size.
F close can just be replaced with close handle and that is pretty much it for the file reading. Now the only thing left to do is having a replacement for put S. For that I'm just going to define my own function and because I'm building this program with the subsystem console, the operating system will make sure that I already have a console window attached to it. So all I need to do is get the handle of that console window, which I can do with get std handle for the standard output handle. This is the equivalent to std out in C. Then I can use write console A, uh, pass in the console handle, write out the value. Uh, I also need to specify the length of the value, which I can just do with strlen. And in the C standard library, put s usually puts in a new line at the end of the value that I pass in. So I'm just going to write that to the console as well. Now we have the bare bones C Windows application that is not using any functions as defined in the headers. Except you might be wondering, well, I'm using strlen here, which is usually a C library function. But as it happens, the Microsoft C compiler provides this implementation as an intrinsic. If the compiler encounters strlen, it will provide us an implementation. Now, if I go ahead and build this and then run it, you see it still works. And if we now look at the executable size, I can see that it is 113 kilobytes, a tiny bit smaller because I'm not using any C library functions. However, the C standard library is still being statically linked in, even though I technically do not really use it anymore. Well, apart from the main function. If I completely want to exclude the C runtime, I would have to add this link option, which is called no default lib. This will now prevent any default libraries of being statically linked into my program. However, because I'm using Windows functions, I also need to link in the kernel 32 lib. Previously, it has been included by default, but now because I specify no default lib, it will no longer be pulled into my executable. So now with the C runtime library excluded from my project, let me go ahead and build it. And as you can see, I'm now getting a few errors here, uh, mostly about unresolved external symbols. The one I'm going to focus first is this main CRT startup. Now all that means is main is actually not the first function that is being called in my application. In actuality, it is this main CRT startup. Uh, the C standard library calls out into this function, which will set up a bunch of C runtime specific features and pass command lines and all this stuff. And then this function will call out into main. But now because I'm no longer providing the C library uh, into my executable, I need to provide a definition for this myself because this function no longer exists. So I'm gonna do that right now. And all I'm gonna do here is call out into main and store the results in an integer. Now if my program starts, it will actually find the main CRT startup function. It will call into main, uh, which will then return a result. But then I'm just doing nothing afterwards with that result. That has the effect that the process will still be alive because I have not told the operating system that my process is done and it should close it. So what I need to do is call exit process and pass in the result so it can then be displayed to the user in the console window. If I go ahead and compile this now, I can see that the main CRT startup um, reference is actually now being resolved. However, I do not really like the name main CRT startup. It still suggests that there's a C runtime attached to this program that kind of needs to be set up. So I'm just gonna rename this function to something that I like more and specify a flag on the linker to use this new entry point instead. So I'm just gonna name this program start and on the linker, I'm gonna provide a new entry point to use, which is also program start. So now instead of using main CRT startup, it will jump into program start first. Now there's a few other errors uh, left to deal with, such as the GS handler check, security check cookie, and security cookie. 
I could provide my own implementation for all these functions, but for this project, I'm just gonna disable this feature altogether. All these methods have to do with um, buffer overrun checks, which is a common attack vector. But since this is not a security minded application, I do not care about this feature. So I'm just gonna disable it. So if I go ahead and build this now, there's only two unresolved external symbols left to deal with. And one of the things left to deal with is the check stack function right here. I'm also not gonna provide my own implementation for it, but essentially what this is doing is for every function call, it will check if there's still room left on the stack for the arguments that we pass in. And if not, it would dynamically allocate or rather commit a new page of memory for the stack. On Windows, every program by default gets a one megabyte stack but only four kilobytes of stack are actually committed. And that means whenever we actually need more memory than four kilobytes on the stack, it will just go ahead and dynamically uh, commit another page of memory for us. So because I do not want to um, deal with this, I'm just gonna provide a ridiculously large probing value. And then I'm also gonna tell the linker to not only reserve one megabyte of stack, but also immediately commit it. So now if I go ahead and build this, you can see I only have one unresolved external symbol left and that is for memset. Why does the compiler need to call memset? That is because our ridiculously large data array right here um, is being zeroed out. And the way the compiler is doing this by actually calling memset with the value of zero to set all this memory. And because memset is a C library function, I need to provide my own implementation for that as well. Now I'm just gonna copy paste an implementation in here right now, but it is fairly simple. It just basically has a destination and then we loop over the amount of count that we specified and then set each byte uh, of however many counts we have to the value that is specified. So if I go ahead and build this now, you see that I get another error that memset is actually an intrinsic function and cannot be defined. So the C compiler, uh, the Microsoft C compiler, similar to strlen, actually has an intrinsic for memset. So I could be using memset down here, for example, anywhere in my program without actually specifying this function. But for some reason, it still relies on the C implementation somehow, even if this is an intrinsic. I'm not quite sure why. If anyone knows, um, just leave a comment down below. I would be very curious to know. But I actually have to tell the compiler now to not use the intrinsic memset function, but rather use my own specified one right here. And I can do this by using this pragma right here, where I just say pragma function memset. So this basically means do not use the intrinsic, um, but rather we define it ourselves right here. So if I go ahead and compile this now, we see no errors anymore. And let's run it. And it works. And if I now look at the output size of the executable, we can see is actually four kilobyte. Um, that is because I now have an executable without the C runtime included. I'm just using Windows kernel functions. And actually, if I check the properties, uh, you can see it's slightly under four kilobytes, actually. It's just that this hard drive is using four kilobytes sector sizes, so it always allocates four kilobyte blocks, but the actual data is just 3.5 kilobytes. And as you can see, it's quite involved to get the C runtime library um, out of your application. You have to provide all your implementation for these functions that you've been using before. And then you're also giving up some things like the buffer overrun check, for example. Obviously, if you're a very security-minded application, you should probably consider putting that back in. But for me personally, for my projects, I do not really care about it. I'm also gonna put the example projects that you just saw up for download, and you will find the link down in the description as well, together with all the links to the documentation of all the command line flags that I used. I hope this was somewhat interesting to you, and maybe let me know down in the comments if you would ever consider compiling without the C runtime library, or if you actually prefer it included in your application. And that's about it, and I see you next time. Bye.